certain developments in Afghanistan at this time. How do these developments impact on Pakistan and how should Pakistan respond? My answer is that the Afghan people have one more time demonstrated that you cannot defeat them. Britain tried and Britain failed. The Soviet Union tried, not Russia, not Russia. The Soviet Union tried and the Soviet Union failed. And then <laughs> the Yankees, Washington, United States tried and after 20 years, United States has accepted. We failed. The writing is on the wall. Even though Afghanistan has the same kind of ulama from Darul Uloom like Pakistan, but they have backbone. <laughs> and they can fight. They don't have the knowledge. No, they don't have the knowledge. But they have the backbone and they can fight. So the writing is on the wall. Islamabad can say what they want. The writing is on the wall. In my opinion, it's only a matter of time that the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan will be restored. It was established in the 1990s and Mullah Umar was the head of the state. And they had an ambassador in New York. And this man was fluent in English. <laughs> a very well educated man, a very cultured man. And he became my friend because I was based in New York. And he was sending the cassettes because there was no internet. He was sending the cassettes of my lectures to Kabul. And he reported to me, Sheikh, Kabul agrees with you, everything except two. Number one, Kabul believed that they must fight to get recognition from the United Nations that they are the government of Afghanistan. And I had said, forget the UN. <laughs> Number two, Kabul believes that the paper money is halal. <laughs> and I had said, the paper money is bogus, it's fraudulent, it's a vehicle of oppression, and exploitation and enslavement and haram. <laughs> but they deferred with me. <laughs> so this time when the Islamic Emirate returns after 20 years, I hope they'll get some sense in their head and don't go knocking on the doors of the United Nations. You don't need the United Nations, number one. Number two, you don't need the IMF. You can declare in Afghanistan, dinar, dinar and dirham as legal tender as money. If the Islamic Emirate in Afghanistan does that, Pakistan, you can't sleep anymore. <laughs> Your days for sleeping will be over. Islamabad will get a zalzala. Because Afghanistan will be showing the road of dealing with the subject of riba. So Pakistan will then have to declare dinar and dirham legal tender here as well, while the rupee is still there. When Pakistan does that, 
because of Afghanistan and you have dinar and dirham in the market, only then can Pakistan take the rope from around its neck. All the interest you're paying on loans and you're afraid to default because if you default, your rupee will crash like Venezuela. But once you have dinar and dirham in the market, then Pakistan can declare to the world, the moral law is the highest law. There is no oppression in the moral law. And the interest we are paying on these loans is oppression. So we will not pay any more interest. Bas khatam. Bat khatam. We will not pay any more interest. But we will repay the capital sum borrowed. Then the money lender will not know what to do. <laughs> because if he attacks the rupee and the rupee crashes, we have dinar and dirham. So there are developments taking place in Afghanistan now and about to take place, which can change Pakistan.